Hi all, welcome to my channel, welcome to John's Battle Breaking. Today we've got Eddie Stobart moving the nation, issues 3, 4, 5 and 6. Issue 3, as we all know now, is the first wheel. Now there's 14 of these all together, so that's a tenth of the complete build. <laughs> so that's not too bad. Uh, there'll be 14 quick issues. At least then we can have a look at what's in the magazine as well, which I always like uh, reading. Um, Hachet do a great lot of uh, research into the stories. Edward goes to work is the first one. And then they've got the Scania 110 Super. That's brilliant. And then issue four, the front bumper. But let's do issue three first. So let's get on with the build. Okay, so let's get the tire out. Right, there we got the parts. That was some of the noisiest packaging I've ever come across. Uh, here's the tire. It's got a nice tread on it. The Goodyear name. G291. Lovely job, like it's the same on both sides. So that's great. So we can just pop that in some water. Very hot water. Good glug. And we can then put these two pieces together. So assembling the wheel rims there you go just like that lovely job there nicely painted as well that excellent stuff and we just need the screws tire so I need a towel let's see here's a nice dirty old towel it's actually clean it just looks dirty right that should have had a good sort by now I think let's see Boop -a -doop -a -doo. Let's see if it's pliable enough Ooh, doo -doo -doo -doo. no so just to put it in like what is it taking it is it having it I think it is what's there no not quite let's leave it in on that hot water a little bit longer come back to it in a minute okay let's give this another try there we go quite getting that in it feels a lot more pliable now this uh this rubber but still oh, oh. it's a toughie it's popping through the other side <laughs> it doesn't want to go. I don't think this is a good year. I won't be surprised if this is a budget tire. A budget tire, it's out of shape. Look at that. <laughs> <laughs> what have you done to it? There you go. There you go. 
to that. Excellent. There we go. There we go. Now, wheel trim. One, two, three, four. Logs there, four holes. Just match them up and pop into place like that. That's there you go. That's the first wheel. Lovely jubbler. Okay, so that's the wheel completed. That looks similar size to the uh, Root Master. Uh, first of 14, which I've already mentioned. So let's have a look at the magazine. First article, Edward goes to work. Edward Stolbert left school in 1970 and was keen to work for his father, Eddie. He soon started to exert an important influence on the running of the company. Edward's time at Cowdew Secondary Modern near Carlisle was not a particularly happy experience for him. He suffered from a stam and, and described himself as a bit of a loner at school. He didn't join in the gossip about the previous evening TV because he didn't watch TV at home and he preferred to help the school gardener rather than join the games in the playground. Edward's school turned comprehensive boy before he was 15, school leaving age in 1970, but he was not able to take advantage of the openings this provided and left school in the summer of 1970. That article goes on. Oh, three pages mentions the M6 motorway uh, more about his family and his working life there's a timeline here Edward age 14 helps his father with construction work on the M6 he then leaves school in 1970 he also in 1970 takes delivery his first Arctic a Scania is it a Scania or Scania 110 1970 23rd November Eddie Stobart Limited is formed excellent stuff and then we have the arctic the first articulated truck to join the sobat fleet was the scania 110 super reg yrm 908j this consisted of a twin axle six wheel tractor unit chassis cab and a separate tandem axled eight wheel 20 foot flatbed trailer william Stolbert liked to photograph the trucks in his father's yard as you can see from his picture of the first Arctic to join the fleet, he liked to include his dog Tim in the shop. What a job, boy. The purchase and registration of the Scania 110 in 1971 was a major step forward for Eddie Stobart, who had bought his, his first truck in 1960, a four wheeler Guy Invincible. The Guy Invincible had been given the distinctive Stobart livery of Post Office Red and Brunswick Green, the iconic colour scheme that is still reflected in the livery today. The cab doors also carried details of the company E.P. Stobart called Beck 206 Cumberland. Brilliant. That goes on for a couple of pages. And then on the back page, we've got issue 4, which is the front bumper, which we have here. So, let's get on with the build. Okay, let's do a parts check. We have front bumper, front offside headlight reflector, front near side headlight reflector, two headlight lenses a front registration plate a towing pin six 1.2 times three mil pb screws and three 2.3 times four mil pm screws one spare lovely jubbly right right i've sussed out how to get these out of packaging I just cut them with scissors there we go that's all the parts out probably get the lenses later with uh, not lenses leds later what i thought anyway that bumper looks absolutely gorgeous it's got left and right lovely jubbler that looks great that excellent stuff right first of all let's see what it wants us to do it wants us to take the bumper 41 and the near side headlight reflector 403 Note that a reflector two screw socket circled and a locating pin arrow. The bumper has matching features. Boom, 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 boom. There we go. Okay. That's left. That's right. 
So that goes there like so, that goes there like so, and that pops in. Yeah, should pop in there. Okay, well, seems to want to go for me. Let's try it that way, oh, wrong way around. This way around then. No, it should go that way around. That uh, is more kids in hole. That peg. That. Right there. Excellent. You've been a little bit fussy there, I think. There it is. Okay, for this, we need the DP01 screws. Just need two of these. These are quite narrow screws, these. Button. Do 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 do. I didn't think that uh, headlight um, cover was going to go in. There we go. That's that. Now we can fix the headlight reflector in place with the two screws, and now we need to fit the lenses. Now. Take the first headlight lens and fit it into the headlight, headlight reflector. Make sure it is the right way up. Now, uh, some markings on these lenses. Whether oh, you can actually see that or not. Uh, can focus. I think that is. Oh, it does focus, but I don't know whether you can see them or not. But there is only one way it needs to go. Just make sure you get it the right way up and just press it in place like so. It's difficult to see. You just have to refer to the um, instructions for all that. Now, again. There's a locating hole there, screw hole there, screw hole, oops, sorry. Locating hole there, screw hole there, screw hole there. And this basically sits in there. Now that one went straight in, the other one was a bit awkward. <laughs> Typical. And, uh, and the camera's lost its focus now. What is going on? There you go. Camera was having a bit of a wobble. It's focusing better now. I've adjusted the lighting in here as well. It can be an absolute pain video in times. Not whether it's OBS or the individual cameras, but anyway, we're back to normal. Two screws again. There we go, if you go and buy. And there we can put the second lens on. There again. You should be able to see which way that lens goes. Let's see if I can show you. There we go. You can see the markings on the lens cover. There we go. Anyway, that's them in place.
Okay, now we've got the towing pin. Let's just share it like that. And basically, this goes through here. Keyhole shape there, like so. And we need one of these 1.3 mil PV screws down here. Excellent. There we go. Is that in place? And now we can fit the registration plate there with the other screws that we have. These are DDO1s. Going into metal so we can pop on a little bit of oil. I don't think I've tried any of this bill without any oil at the moment. On the screws that is. But it does always make it easier to get the screws in place. There we go. That's issue four complete. That looks nice and bunny. So issue four, issue three with our rubbery friend. Excellent, lovely jubbly. Okay, let's have a look at what is in the magazine. On page seven, the Colbecks arrive. Edward gained his HGV license as soon as he turned 21 in 1975. Now he was able to drive for the family firm and began to take even more interest in the running of the haulage company. In the main picture, one damp day in 1977, truck spotter Jeff Milne visited the store backyard in Heskett Newmarket and photographed the Colbeck Ranger trucks. This is his photo of Colbeck Ranger, a DAF 2200 eight wheel tipper truck. The combination of fertiliser shop and a budding haulage business clearly worked well. In 1972 the account showed a profit of £17,000. The two young Storbats were close and although William was still at school, Edward took him out at weekends to check out local trucking firms and sit for hours at truck stops. A company called Robson's Transport based in Carlisle was a great favourite. Its trucks picked up loads from fishing boats in Scotland on Saturday nights, stopping off in Carlisle on Sunday mornings on their way to the fish markets in London and the South. Robson's trucks were particularly smart with finely painted liveries. Excellent stuff. That goes on for three pages. We have on the third page of timeline 1975 at the age of 21 Edward becomes a director of the company taking a special interest in the haulage side of the business. In 77 William leaves school and in the same year first photographs of the Colbeck prefix Storbeck trucks. In 78, Edward moves the Harley side of the business to new premises in Greystone Road, Carlisle. And then we move on to page 10, transport calves. Until the opening of the motorways in Britain, every truck driver had his or her favourite stop off, where there was a warm welcome and good food to eat. Most have now been lost forever. Tell us about it. Although there was less traffic on the roads before the arrival of the motorways in the 1950s, lorry drivers had a tiring job as they followed the air roads. They had to contend with single carriageways, roundabouts, sharp bends and steep hills. Truck roads were studded with transport cafes where a wide pull-off provided space to park and food was reasonably priced. Not so these days. Some cafes also sold fuel and there was even a chance of getting assistance from a mechanic. The best transport calves soon became meeting places for drivers and in a business where workers were constantly on the move, trade union leaders also made a point of visiting the calves to mobilise support. Excellent, in one of the pictures we've got the Cedar Cafe, home cooking, milk bar, that looks lovely. And on the next page there's a little article on motorbike cafes. Some cracking pictures on here. Care enthusiasts gather at Watford Gap Services in the M1 to mark the 50th anniversary of the opening of the motorway. Mm, lovely cars there as well. And coming in issue 5 door panel and details. Lovely jubbly. Let's get on with it. Okay, for this issue, we'll need the door from issue 2. 
Uh, we have a list of parts 501 end of door panel for right door, 502 wind door for right door, 03 is a door hinges times 2, 04 is a rod for door opening mechanism, 05 is a spring, 06 is a bracket for door opening mechanism, and we have 6 1.8 times 2. 0.5 mil pm screws labeled dd02 with one spare now this packaging is a lot more friendly than the other so you get all that mate lovely jubbly just like that those are the screws that's the inner panel it's plastic there's a window got hinges a rod a spring oh that looks fiddly lovely jubbly bit of fiddly stuff right let's have a look so we've got the rod oh let's see fit this spring 505 onto the rod for the door opening mechanism 504 fit the rod and spring into the recess in the inner door panel 501 take the bracket for the door opening mechanism 506 it fits over the rod 504 in order to fit it you'll need to push the rod so that the rib around the rod moves away from the holes in the door okie dokie let's have a go right. so basically we'll need the instructions there for a minute pop these hinges to one side we need to put the spring on there like so and here we have that there and then does this just clip in place looks like it does yep Spring in mind, eh? Oh, there's tension there. <laughs> but there, yeah, that clip just sits in there and you clip it under there. But as you can see, it doesn't push the rod back. It's a little bit sad. And the spring is free. Yeah. Oh well, nothing more I can do with that. Could think about changing the spring, but uh, getting that clip out now. Could push it out, I suppose. But there we go. That is the first four parts. Okay, okay. Pop that to one side. Now, what we need is to fit these hinges on here and here on the door. Um, No. Is it? Do, 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 do. It's that way. Yep. Okay, okay. Okay, let's get the screws out of the bag. This one could have been done earlier, really. Seems we've got the mirrors already on. That one's part way on. I'm not putting any oil on, but I think we do need a little bit of oil on these screws. Make sure you get the hinges the right way up. Obviously not laying it flat simply because um don't want to put any undue pressure on them mirrors so it just makes it a little bit awkward. Once we get the screw in, once it back we'll be alright. There we go. Very nice 
inside. All the jubbler. Alright, so I'll look at this one again. Yeah, I'll stay in it. Lovely. There we go. Would have been better without the uh, mirrors in place, but it is what it is. Um, we don't get the parts when we feel as though we need them. We just get them sensibles, don't we? Right, fitting the window and assembling the door. Take the window 502 and check how it fits into the outer door panel. Here we go. Let's see this. Clip there and there. So that will go like that. Just like that. Excellent. Two raised pegs and now we need to fit the inner door panel over the outer door assembly as indicated with three PM screws. Okay, donkey. Just like that. Let's be able to look at that mirror again. That window rather, I want to talk about mirror. Hmm. Yeah, just sits there. Might be a little bit loose, I don't really know, but there we go, so one, two, three screws. Okay, okay. Again, I'm gonna put a bit of oil on these screws. Trust the egg up. There we go. No winder mechanism for this uh, window, which is a, a little bit uh, sad. But at least they don't get scratched by going up and down, as we've seen with other builds. There we go. See that's pushed in now and it's not coming back out. It might slowly release itself I suppose. I don't know. Well there we go. That is issue 5 completed. It does look nice all that livery doesn't it? Excellent. Lovely job. What's the overhead cam look like? There we go. Excellent. I don't need that anymore. I'm going to need them screws. can pop that to one side and we can move on to what's in the magazine. Let's have a look. There we go. Page 7. What's in an M? Around the same time as he moved the haulage business to Carlisle, Edward did away with a short lived Colbeck nickname and introduced a new naming system for the trucks. One of the first trucks to bear a woman's name can be photographed by Jeff Milne was Julia, a Scania 111 Super, seen here in the Greystone Road yard in 1978. Note the curtain side of the trailer has the old callback phone number, while the door carries the new contact details in Carlisle. Ah, oh, lovely job there. Julia. When Edward first became a director of the company in 1975, his enthusiasm was for driving. He employed local men from the Heskett Newmarket area, many of whom he had known since childhood. Not all of them shared his enthusiasm for long distance work and nights spent away from home. The availability of a larger pool of drivers was partly why Edward decided to move the company to Carlisle. Along with the move into town, another move was afoot. The photographer and truck enthusiast Jeff Milne reported that on his visit to the Carlisle Yard in September 1978, seven of the Stolbart fleets of eight vehicles were on site. These were the three Colbeck DAFs, Roma, Raider and Ranger, an unnamed ERF LV Arctic VAO613H and an unnamed second-hand Mercedes Arctic. Of more interest were Scania 3 bearing the name Julia and the DAF F2200 that Milne had seen at Newlands, now carrying the name Twiggy. 
lovely job boy. And that goes on for three pages. The timeline, 1978, women's names start to appear on the vehicles. In 1979, a new livery is introduced with a white cab roof and white waistband around the cab. Excellent stuff. And on page 10, we have the blue fire lady, AEC Marshall Tipper. With a registration number VCH214M, Eddie Stobart's Blue Fire Lady was an AEC ergomatic tipper truck. The truck was part of the Stobart fleet in the 1970s. Blue Fire Lady, a six wheeler heavy duty diesel engine truck built and sold under the AEC market, market was primarily used by the Eddie Stobart company for bulk feed transportation for the agricultural industry. The prestigious AEC logo continued to be used even though. AEC Limited, the associated equipment company, had effectively been taken over by its great rival Leyland in 1962. Excellent stuff. That goes on for a couple of pages. And on the um, back, well, not the back page, but the last page, AEC Routemaster. The picture there, the most famous vehicle produced by AEC was the iconic red London Transport double decker bus, the Routemaster. Excellent. Which I've got in my build. Yep. Next parts, your next set of parts is the door panel. Inside door trim, quarter light closure, window winder, door handle, door pull, kick plate, and screws. Okay, so let's move on to issue six, which we also have just here. Excellent stuff. Let's move on. Okay, let's do a parts check. We have 601, the inside trim for right hand door, 602, the quarter light closure, 603, the window winder, 04 is the inner door handle, 05 is a door pull, 06 is a kick plate, and then we have 6 1.2 times 4 mil PB screws, one spare. It's taken a while to do this door, I must admit. Okay, you know let's get the parts out of the bag. There we go. Come on. Right, you come. There we go. Whoops, it is. You don't want to lose any of them. There we go. It's all right. This is all plastic, plastic, plastic. And the screws are as well and prepped. There we go. Lovely jelly kick plate. Okay, take the inside door trim 601 and identify the fixing points. All oh, the details which are all circle, which are all these here. Oh, can we see them? There we go. Excellent. So we're on the circular quarter lights, closure 602, and fit it into the top left. Okay, this is key shaped. This is the hole. Let's see. Very fiddly little parts. That goes in there like that. Right. That is a very loose fit. Okay, so we need to fit that with a screw. Do 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 do. Let's see, there we go. Okay, and I'll press together. There we go, that's the first bit of detail. Okay, second one is this winder, which goes just there again. Look, look at that lovely jubbly. And then we screw that into place. Bum, ba -dum, bum, bum. There we go. That's the second part. And we do that for the third and the fourth part. And then we can fit that on the door, I think. That goes there. Do, 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 do. This is 
got a location, got a little peg on it here, this handle, so it will only go one way, like so. Let's take a couple of screws. So there's it. At least we're not using glue, I suppose. But I must admit, I'm a little bit disappointed there's no winding mechanism. Second screw, there we go. Excellent. That oh, looks pretty nice. Lovely jubbly. Okie doke. Fitting the door trim, fit the door trim panel 601 onto the inner door panel 501 on the door assembly from the previous issue. Push it firmly into the re recess. This is a push fit connection. Okie dokie. Right. You can see where the uh, holes are there for the back of this. So we can just push this into place. Snap, snap, snap. There we go. Brill. Hey. Kick plate. Must go there. And that again is just a push fit. Let's see. Let's have a look at this. Quick look at this. Yes. Yeah. These tabs, two different sizes, so we will only go one way. Like so. There we go. Let's see. Completed door. All we need now is a cap. How many issues did that take? It's been one door. No wonder. Okay, dog. Well, that is the door. Totally finished. Does look nice though, must admit. And there's no marks on that plastic window. So that's a good thing, but these don't operate anything. But it does look good. Let's have a look at uh, the overhead. There we go. So we have the door, front bumper with the registration plate, and the tyre. We don't need the screws. Excellent, lovely jubbly. That is issues. Three, four, five, and six completed. Let's have a look at the magazine. Okay, page seven. The youngest brother, William, was seven years younger than Edward, but he was equally enthusiastic about the trucking business from an early age and would later take on an important role. In the top picture, at the start of the 1970s, the rally chopper was the vehicle of the moment for any boy, including young William. Seen here against the backdrop of the Cumbrian Hills, being so much younger than his brothers and sister, he often felt left out, and as they tended to regard him as a spoilt sibling. After William left school in 1977, he started to whip his father on the slag spreading side of the business. Shortly afterwards, William met local lad Andrew Tinkler, who was about the same age, and the two became lifelong friends. Andrew's parents were friends of Eddie and Nora and attended the same church. Andrew was already interested in the transport business and helped his brother-in-law with trucking work. This was how he bumped into William. They met while William was slag spreading on a farm. Since William was so much younger than his brothers, he spent most of his time with Andrew. Excellent stuff. That right, goes on for three more pages. And the timeline, 1979, Eddie is offered the chance to take a site in Kingstown £244,000 was needed to buy the site and warehouse. 1980, Edward marries Sylvia Turner. Also in 80, after selling Newlands Hill and closing part of his business, Eddie raises £160,000. He takes a large bank loan to make up the rest of the sum needed. Also the same year, December, Eddie Stobart Limited Express Haulage moves to Kingstown. And in 1982, William turns 21 and gets his truck license. Edward assigns him to a Scania. 
And on the next page, page 10, Stobart Truck Stops. One of the many areas that the Stobart company has invested in are truck stops, essential for every truck driver. In 2013, the Stobart Group acquired the leases on two sites at Carlisle and Rugby that had previously been run by Night Owl Trucks. They were rebranded as Eddie Stobart Truck Stops with a combined parking capacity of 500 trucks and aimed at all truck drivers, not just those working for Stobart seeking a safe comfortable place to stay overnight. The sites are restaurants and washing facilities and in the case of the Carlisle truck stop rooms where drivers can get a good night's sleep. Excellent stuff. That goes on for a couple of pages. Lovely job left. And part issue seven, your next set of parts, seat support structure. What did I say? Seat support structure. <laughs> Driver's seat support, rear and front connection plates, front suspension arms, seat holder and frame, adjustment knobs and various screws. Doesn't seem to be a great lot uh, for the next issue, but anyway, there we go. You can't really see it. It's uh, pretty, apparently wise actually. But there we go, that's uh, coming in issue seven. Excellent stuff. Now, I always like these magazines. I think they're brilliant. I think Ashley do a fantastic job. They did a great job with the Rootmaster, the Spitfire, and now the Eddie Stobart moving the nation. The articles are absolutely fascinating. And again, it's a collection. I'm not sure if we get any um, binders with this. I've, I've forgotten about that. <laughs> well, we do it. Oh, we must do because they've got little uh, metal hoops here um, for us to put in the binder. Anyway, if you did like that, Give us a big thumbs up, subscribe, hit that notification bell, have a look at all my other videos, and I'll see you next month for the next four set of issues. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.